All right. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Who? Who's there? So Rafael. Michael. Cindy. All right. Give me one second here. Okay, let's look at the book. Some information here, where is it? Okay, so let's just review um, some of the other info in chapter four, and we can have the rest of you guys share your field Activities. Okay. So, all right, so some more information about social engineering, uh, which is the topic for this chapter. We've just a few more. Um, I guess, talking points. So as we know, uh, social engineering, that is using an understanding of human nature to get information from people, right? Um, in this context, there's more of a negative, um, I guess, motive, right? The reason why you want to get information is to use that information um, for, you know, things that are not exactly legal. So a lot of stuff that we talked about yesterday in your field exercise is quite relevant. And also when we look at the book, we look at this section here, this section, um, Let me take out this highlight here. Okay. So right here, um, it says, no matter how thorough a security policy is or how much money is spent on firewalls and IDS systems, employees are still the weakest link, right? That is an established fact that human beings are I guess when we talk about the top, top, top um, security concerns, right, uh, that anyone who who is in security would have, it's going to be human vulnerability, human weaknesses. Uh, human beings are always liable to make mistakes, to forget things, right, to go with a lot of assumptions. Right, and so those are employees are considered, or human beings in general, right, are considered to be the weakest link in any organization. So, um, and it says, of course, right here, attackers know how to use this fact, right? So, how do you deal with this, right? The people who you depend on to do the work, the people who you depend on to move the company forward to get things done at the weakest link. And of course, if we know that they're the weakest link, then attackers also know that human beings are the weakest link. 
So there's a lot of suggestions. One of the most important suggestions is right here. Employees must be uh, um, employees must be well trained. And just like it says right here, just like you have fire drills, right? Fire drills and you want to test the functionality of a system. You know, you do tests and trials and fire drills, stuff like that. How people evacuate during a the fire, they got to go this way, they got to go to the parking lot. You know, you practice that, right? The idea here is that employees also have to be subjected to security drills, all right? Um, and part of it is what we've talked about um, when you engage the services of um, penetration testers, right? You engage their services, and this might be a good way to find out, you know, how much training employees. When you have penetration, uh, penetration testing, you're not trying to, you're not doing it because you want to fire your employees. You want to see how, how dumb they are. No. You're doing it for the health of the organization, just like you go for a yearly checkup, perhaps, right, with your doctor. And, you know, if something has to be corrected in your health, you correct it. So you're not trying to do it because you want to know, you know, which employees are, you know, messed up or are giving you all this trouble. You're trying to figure out the health of the organization. And so when you get the report, then you start fixing things. Uh, it's not about firing people. Okay, you want to help people get better. Some people just don't know. So you train them so they are more aware of what needs to be done. So very important, uh, right here highlighted in pink, attackers know how to use this fact. So if you find yourself in this kind of a job, or you find yourself working with somebody whose job it is to make decisions, then you can bring your knowledge, right, to the job. You can bring your suggestions, recommendations, based on this kind of activities that we're having and this discussions we're having, all right? Um, so right here, it gives some kind of a, a tip, right? But that's too dark. He says, for example, randomly selecting and testing employees each month to see if they're going to give their passwords to someone inside or outside the organization, right? Um, it's a good way to see if people are following instructions and following the policy, okay? All right, uh, these are things we've talked about as part of uh, social engineering tactics. Um, a social engineer is going to use some kind of urgency, right? Uh, you've got to do it right now. It's urgent. I need to have that information right now. There's this pressure, right? There's this pressure. So if you have a training or you're in a position to advise on training, well, you're telling your employees that this is the kind of thing they should be looking out for, right? you got to look out for any email or, you know, phone call or whatever that sounds urgent. It has to be done now. We need that information right now. Can you come to us right now, right? Uh, it says there's the false sense of urgency, a false sense of urgency, right? A uh, quid pro quo, you know, kind of like some exchange. If you give me this, I give you that. Right? Um, you know, promises, promises, promises. If you get this done, uh, if we have the password, we can come right away and fix your system. Right? Promises, empty promises, actually. All right? Uh, status quo. Everyone is doing it, so you should too. Right? Again, that's another kind of pressure. And uh, kindness. He says, this is most probably the, this is the most dangerous weapon 
because you want to you want to be helpful, right? Somebody calls and says, "Oh, my child, you know, uh, can you tell me if my child is at school?" Now, if you are aware of the policy, uh, you know, in a school environment, you don't give out that kind of information. Even if I say I am this child's parent, I am the mother, I'm the father of this child. You got to know what the policy is. But because you're trying to be kind, you feel like, oh, oh you know, uh, this, this person on the phone needs to reach out to their child ASAP. So let me just help them out. There, you have no way of verifying that the person on the phone, just because they said, I'm John's dad, how are you going to verify that? So you got to you got to follow the policy. Maybe you got to let your supervisor know what is going on, right? But you got to follow policy. Some things you have to escalate it to a senior person. All right. These are the kind of information that you share with employees that people need to be aware of, right? Companies make a lot of mistakes. Companies get breached because employees make mistakes probably due to not being aware of what they should be aware of. Um, well, here's another one here. Convincing an employee that, you know, this is somebody very important. You know, you're the big boss or you're on the board of directors. Uh, you know, you make up some profile for yourself so you can gain some privileges. All right. All right, let's see what else we can find here. Let's go to the next few pages. Shoulder surfing, we've talked about that. Um, that is things that we need to be careful about when you're in public places. Um, you're in a library, you know, on the computer. You're in the train, you're on the train, you're in the bus, you're, you know, in any public place. You know, who is watching your stuff? Your, trying to get something done. Um, in fact, uh, was it Wilderson or if not, I forget which of you guys talked about when you press the keys or you're trying to check out, you know, and you press the keys to put in your pin. Who was that? And something about a heat, something about heat coming out of that and then somebody being able to grab your info. Who, that was who me. mentioned that? Yeah, you know, you make me paranoid every time i go to swipe my card now i'm thinking of scrambling the numbers i'm thinking who told me that you know <laughs> this is messing up in my mind <laughs> you know but it's kind of funny right uh, but you can't you can't be you can't be, you can't be too careful you know you can't be too careful because 99 percent of the time everything is fine it's that one percent when things go wrong that things can really 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 be bad so you can't be too careful Whatever security measures you have to take for yourself or on behalf of your company or employer or something, you, cannot, you can never have too much security. Of course, you don't want to make people go crazy, you know, with having to do too many extreme things. But uh, you've got to have good recommendations that people can follow, all right, that makes sense and works for them. Uh, this is something we talked about before, uh, using phones to take uh, photos of people's credit cards, right? So if somebody is just basically waving their phone around you while you're in the checkout line, are well, you all like, uh, excuse me, could you give me, you know, some distance there, right? Not everyone is, is texting. Not everyone is, you know, busy on their phone making a call. People might be trying to, because... You know that if you go to a supermarket or you go to a store, grocery store, you're likely to find people who are trying to check out, who are trying to pay, who are trying to use their credit card. So that's the best place to go to get information, right? So some people just bring out their card and flash everything around, not paying attention. So remember, 
uh, most people go about their day, no problem, you know, just trying to be honest. But there's some people whose job it is to do bad stuff. So that might be your job one day to protect your company, to work in security um, and help to, you know, maintain the integrity of your company's operations. All right. Um, we'll, go, we'll talk about dumpster diving. I just want to see what else we haven't mentioned here. Okay, well, this is interesting. So this is um, somebody who pretended to be a security person, right? Goes into the hospital with your laptop, right? Goes to the nursing station, and nobody asks this person any questions, right? I mean, somebody comes into your building looking quite important with a nice suit and, you know, the shoes are shining from, you know, you know, like the bright, uh, bright morning sun. Everything is looking very spiffy, right? Uh, but this person is a, it's obviously a criminal. Nobody questioned them, and they just sit down there, um, and they access the access information on their laptop, just watching what's going on and just typing stuff. You know, some, you know, if you're in security, um, you, you cannot be unaware of what is happening, right? A lot of people, you know, mind their own business. Well, if you're secure, and I think that every, every, everyone should be security conscious. You know, like, you know, just be observant of what's happening around you, right? Just be observant of what is happening around you. Don't always just be in a, in a state of, I'm minding my own business. You know, that's not, that's not my problem. It might be a problem, right? It might be a problem if an unauthorized person comes into your building and nobody's asking questions. That might end up being very bad for all the employees that particular day. Um, so just awareness, right? And not taking things for granted can save a lot of trouble, you know, just prevent a lot of trouble, prevent a lot of loss from happening, all right? Uh, fishing is something that we've talked about a lot, right? Uh, I mean, I get emails, you know, quite frequently from somebody claiming to be the department chair or the dean, you know, always People, you know, you get all these emails and the emails are actually getting better. Some of them are still pretty obvious, right? You know, go to Walmart and buy me a, you know, I, I, iTunes, iTunes gift card and mail it to this person who is in Colorado somewhere. That's pretty obvious. But some of them are pretty good, okay? So, again, people need to be trained on what to look out for in an email and not to be in a hurry about clicking and responding to that email, right? So that is obviously um, the tactic where email is used. And there's a link there, there's a logo that's supposed to be a Bank of America logo or an Amazon logo or stuff like that. And people click on that stuff and all kinds of bad stuff happens behind the scenes, right? Some of these things is, you know, some of, like you might have seen in some of your labs on Cengage, the files that get downloaded on the computer of a user, the user may never know that they have opened the gateway to all kinds of activities on their computer. They may never know. So viruses or I guess um, some kind of malware, it's not always obvious that oh, my computer is, has been infected, right? It may not be obvious. 
but it might be affected and it might take weeks or months for anyone to know about it if you don't have you know good security measures in place right so people have to uh, be aware here is a example that you might have seen yourself in your email uh, here's from PayPal we need your help resolving an issue with your account. Blah, blah, blah. Right? We need to confirm your identity. Uh, it is in, in, in poor, sp bad spelling. Right? Uh, because it helps prevent fraudsters from... So, bad spelling is, is, a, is, a, is a clue, you know, that people should take a note of. But again, companies are never, right? Companies never ever ever right ever 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 tell you to click on the link to change your password it's not the practice right to click on a link to change your password to verify your identity there are established processes for doing that right you can log into the website yourself and go ver i mean you're going to get an email saying log into your account and verify they're not going to send you and they click on this link and go in this other direction all right so you guys got to be smart it people right when you're on the job you're constantly advising your staff this is what you guys should do you guys shouldn't be doing stuff like this you guys should be aware of this constant reminders it will amaze you I mean, people in management, you know, when I used to be a, when I worked as an IT professional, people in management, who should know, right? I mean, my HR director will, I mean, this is a, this is a post-it note, right? My HR director will write the password and the username on the post-it note and stick it right there on the monitor. It just, it just amazes me. Why are you doing that? Uh, I can't be bothered with remembering all this stuff. Well, I guess she felt comfortable because she had an office to herself. She could lock the doors, but still, right? I mean, this is like the HR director, you know, with all the um, account information and employees information and stuff like that, right? So you've got to constantly remind these people, constantly. Some people think it's not a big deal. But one day, when things go wrong, then we all start running back and forth when it's probably too late. All right, let's see what else we got here. Okay. Now, uh, I know we talked about this a little bit already, security awareness training, but let me make, just talk about it a little bit more. So security training, uh, sometimes the IT people will train the staff, or other times they're going to invite trainers from outside, okay? Now, if this happens to be your job one day, because this was my job a lot, uh, to either, I mean, to go and find trainers you know people who know what they're talking about right people who have had experience and you also you want to know well what are you guys going to talk about you want to know what are the needs of the company what areas um you know what area of training do the employees need the people in management might need a different training from entry-level staff or you know whatever it is but it's an area that um the company has to devote time to. You know, unfortunately, all this important stuff gets pushed to the background, right? Until, you know, something happens. It's like the building is there, the building has been there for so long. You know, the windows, the doors, the, the locks, you know, everything is just as it is. People don't really do the upgrades when they shoot, right? People don't, I mean, there's no budget for, you know, security and stuff like that. But when there's a break-in, right, robbers break into the building, there's still a lot of stuff, you know, there's a lot of loss to the company. Then suddenly, 
there's a big budget, and then all this money starts getting spent to upgrade things. Meanwhile, it should have been cheaper to just maintain regular upgrades and updates. So why do we wait until everything uh, falls apart? If not, why, why is that a common thing that, you know, we wait until everything falls apart and then we bring out all this money and start making all this noise? Why don't we just, you know, why don't companies just do things on a regular basis? If not, what do you think? Even though are you there? Or you disappeared? Went to I the bathroom? I, I am here, sorry, sorry, I'm here. So, what do you think? Why does that happen? I do apologize. May you please repeat the question one more time? What's the last thing you heard? Security are in a training. Like some employee will train. Um some employer will train their employee about that and some of them will hire orders to train the employee. So mm -hmm. we said sometimes the effort that has to be put into security is not put into security at the right time. So like a physical building, right? Maybe the builder needs an upgrade. Maybe the windows have to be fixed. The locks have to be fixed. The doors have to be fixed. Uh, mm -hmm. The key you know, maybe the, um, I don't know, the passcodes, things have to be upgraded. But, you know, it's like, okay, we're going to do it next month, next month, next month. There's no, we have no money for that right now. But then over the weekend, right, robbers come and break into the building. Still a lot of stuff. Suddenly, people start bringing out money. They start buying stuff and upgrading this and upgrading that. But then it's kind of too late, right, because the damage has been done. So that kind of stuff, I mean, it happens quite a bit. Why? Why do people wait until things have gone bad before they start taking steps that they should have taken on a regular basis before? You understand was, the question? Yes. I would say first, it, it might have something to do with the company policy. If the company really serious about their, uh, you know, the, their information or whatever asset they have, if they really want to secure it, they will have put in place a policy that will force whomever into the management team to enforce that. So for instance, uh, a, a police department, it will be very hard because there they will enforce their policy to be sure you know that they are secure. I think policy comes to play when it comes to that. People wait until you know things all happen and then for them to take action. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Michael, what do you think? Why does this tend to happen? I think it's a habit. Um, I would do a habit aspect as human beings. Uh, once we get away with certain things, unpunish or <laughs> get away with things. Yeah. Uh, yep. So if nobody is being questioned for why it's not done and it's going to repeat itself. Uh, one way I'll put laziness and have it as one. And then uh, it's the next one will be lack of awareness of certain things we speak to. Like uh, <clears throat> he just said, we should make it like security. If it's, if it's a, work, a workspace or workplace, it should be one of, that's where we, we our, livelihood, our livelihood is kind of based on. How do we secure it? We need to make sure it's in the right place. Everything is perfect. We should assign somebody to it and then let a person know that based on policy or the reason why you are hired is part of it and it's your responsibility to take care of it. Uh, in that case, somebody can be held responsible for what they're wrongdoing and all boils down to policy, as you said. So I think we can just use one word uh, for what you guys said. And that word would probably be um, enforcement, right? You can have a policy, but it has to be enforced. Yeah. Just like you know that um, 
you have speed limit signs all over the highway, you know, 55 miles per hour, 40 miles per hour, 45 miles, whatever, on the highway. Now, why don't you go over the speed limit? Because, you know, the police is always hiding somewhere, right? They're going to show up and track you down and you get a ticket, right? Yeah. So you know the policy and you know it's going to be enforced when you're on the highway. So it's not because you're... <laughs> I mean, sorry to say this, but not because we're like such obedient people and we like to obey the law. It's because, you know, you are going to get punished. Somebody's going to, the police is going to be there. And if you're going about the speed limits, you're going to see the blue lights behind your car very soon. Right. But if you are in a place where, you know, nobody cares, nobody's going to enforce anything, then you can break the law because, you know, nobody's going, you know, nobody's going to care about it. Right. So it all comes down to the commitment to enforce. You don't want to wait until things go bad before uh, we do the things that we should do. All right. So that's a, a great comment from you guys. Let's see what else we have. Well, that's a summary here. So. Um, so the techniques that we discussed, uh, shoulder surfing, dumpster diving, piggybacking, people trying to spy and take a look at what you're doing, uh, emails to gather confidential information, and, and all the, um, I guess, techniques and tactics that we can use, right? Like we just talked about enforcement. It's such a big deal. You can have all the software, all the firewalls in place, right? Have all that, all the gadgets, you know, have antivirus and have everything. But if employees, right, are not aware and things are not being enforced, then people can get away with things and it might be too late uh, before we start, before we decide to intervene and do the right thing, right? So things have to be done periodically, especially any measures that have to be taken. And, and uh, just talk about our, our field exercise this week. This is such an important exercise because it gives you an idea of what, an attacker will do, I mean, how far an attacker will go to get information about the target that, they are, you know, they take their time, they're very deliberate about it. And so if you are aware of this gimmicks, right, or this approach from attackers, then it puts you in a good position, right, to be um, more professional on your job in terms of advising and training and bringing up suggestions of what people should be doing with their information or should not be doing. Okay. So that's all I got. Let's, let's go to the other, uh, the rest of you guys didn't present your work. Michael, let's see what you got. Share my screen. So, uh, all right. So, what company did you fought? Uh, did you? target and what did you find about it that was you know yeah so that's uh, useful in an attack i had a lot a bit of experience with uh i did a uh, an internship with a life uh, life insurance company so i chose an insurance company because almost everything they do is money 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 nothing else uh, All right, so uh, what's the company name uh john hancock uh, I had the internship at the one at uh, uh, off 95 Western. All right. Yeah. So I chose, I Googled and then uh, I came out with and any life uh, like insurance company that has been hacked before. So I came out with First American uh, Corporation. Say it again. You Google insurance companies that have been hacked before. Yeah. 
So I chose okay. one. And then I went with uh, <clears throat> this one, which is First American Financial Corporation. So, so what's the point in looking for, what's the point in looking for insurance companies that have been hacked before? Uh, based on the law experience I had over there, um, even though some of the security uh, discussions does not go out between the security uh, staff, but it looks like sometimes the penetration tests and all the reports and other stuff given tell them that there are some certain vulnerabilities that needs to, and then they, sometimes they are lucky, they were in hard. They are very fortunate this is not go long time or they did not stay for that long. So I witnessed a, a bit of impersonation and other kind of petty petty attacks, but uh, I did not see like the entire company being hacked before. So I just Google. All right, well, I, tell, us, tell us what you found. So I- The particular information that we're looking for. Yeah, so I got, the, the, they have so many branches across the country. So I decided to go with the headquarters, uh, which is in California. Uh, I found your yeah, basic information, the website, sister, so many sister kind of resellers, there are facts and everything. I was looking, my target was a CEO, but unfortunately, I, I don't know if, if it's because they've been hacked before. The CEO, have, he, he doesn't even have a, a LinkedIn account. But uh, I was able to Google his name and saw his picture and other stuff, but I couldn't get anything about him on LinkedIn. But I got right, so tell us, tell us what Tell us what you found. What did you find that is useful for this exercise? So I chose, uh, let me go straight to the individual the employee. So I chose Christopher Michael, which is the chief operation officer at First American Corporation. So I kind of got a lot about him. I was able to get into his Facebook account, LinkedIn, uh, his friends, family. But uh, I thought I won't, uh, went too much. So some sites were demanding me to kind of log in and create an account to get all this information, which I think I was pushing too much. They have his personal number, his personal emails on this website, and that is his picture right there. So I did, okay. not, log, I did not create an account, but I went on Facebook and uh, looked for him. I got, he doesn't have anything set up on Facebook, like much detail about him, but other website gave me a little bit. On Facebook, I was able to locate his son, who is the only one uh, with the account. There are about three sons, but one of them uh, found family members. Wait, friends. where's that? Where's that? I'm not, I'm not seeing that information on the screen. Um, let me show you the son. Uh, personal email. Chris. Let's see, employee personal page and contact. Yeah. Of hobbies. Uh, Actually, you just passed it, I think. Is that why you have um, employee, friends, and relatives? Yep. All right, so, so his son is I pick his Nicholas Lebel. Yeah. Uh, his son. And then. Uh, one of his friends he had i have his facebook account even open up here no, no we don't want to see facebook. we don't want to see that just go back to the go back to that report okay so so how did you get hang on how did you get his son's name nicholas Levo? yeah it's, it's it's on his facebook account and then uh it says son over there so on his facebook account he says this is my son right like yeah. So, so Facebook, it, is your, hang on, is your, so your family, um, people include their family information on Facebook, like, you know, their children uh, and their, if you are linked up on Facebook, like if you and your son are friends, it tells you that there's a son, it indicates son. If you and your son are friends, oh, friends on Facebook. Yeah. Okay, I see. I see what you mean. I was like, friends. Okay. 
Yeah. All so right. Yeah, All link right. up. If you have any family member links up, it tells you that like maybe uncle, sister, auntie, or whatever. But he's the only one that. All right. So, friend. so you got his son. Then that's his friend. Yeah. Israel is, Rodriguez. Yeah. But he doesn't also have an option where he also kind of security cautious. So Facebook, you can set it up such a way that uh, only mutual friends or people you know can add you up or you can only add the people up. So I chose one of those people. All right, what else did you find that is personal that we can use uh, seriously here? Um, pretty much in terms of attacking him, I realized that I can, he's kind of a giver. He likes charity, uh, if one of his favorite. Okay. So I, and he, I know that he's a Republican. I got to know his political affiliation. Uh, I know his favorite. How do you how do you know how do you know that? It's uh, that based on the the likes and then uh, the pages. He like he liked guns, hunting. He liked Mitt Romney. Uh, it's the likes. So what did you what did what, what did you write that here about the guns and Republican affiliation? No, I didn't write that here. But I, I have it. Why why not? That's part of your report, right? This is what I found yeah, about this person. Yeah, I only wrote a little bit about where he, his habits is contributing and lunch to other stuff, but I didn't, because it wasn't stated, but based on the pages he likes, that was why I didn't select them. Okay, so did you find uh, some companies that he, you know, donated to, okay, you said um, Alter Good Deeds. Yep. That's the company he has given money. Yep. And then he based, and I think this is even workplace. And there's another one that I saw, that one he likes, like following the page. And you can see that he likes doing charity and he likes gender empowerment, especially female, uh, get child education. So I get to see the likes of certain things, he like, uh, his favorite stuff, like things he likes. So if, if I'm to get to him or like try to yeah. hack him, uh, I'll, yeah. I'll go through some of his likes. I'll, I'll try, I'll pretend as if we all get into the same line and uh, send information or create a fake page in terms of donation and other stuff, uh, seeking, uh, seeking donation from him. And then uh, create a page in such a way that you have to fill in details of yourself to be able to donate to the website. Oh, I will go through some of the people he, uh, his friends try to get some of his information, even though some of the website gave, but I wasn't, I was kind of, I thought I was pushing too much. Uh, well, I think that, uh, I think that from what you have found, yeah. there's a lot of useful information. You see, part of what we read in the book, it tells us that Social engineers, they use, um, you know, what you know about the pattern of human beings, how kind of things that, the kind of things that makes a human being vulnerable, right? Yeah. Um, things that they are concerned about, things that they are interested in, right? So from your description here, if you write this, if you somehow make contact with this person about donating to something about Republicans, now that's where you know that this person is probably vulnerable, right? Yep. Because they are or something about guns, you know, donations for some some political cause that involves guns. Okay? Yeah. Um so all right, so does the average person, you know, read this much detail about people's lives besides not, this assignment? Not really. Uh I think I went too much, uh even to the extent of some pages away. Even giving me his well, uh, like net wealth, some of the stocks he traded, and how much he makes within a day, and I thought that was too way too much to, to get to know. I don't even know him in person, but now I have more than basic information now you, about him. Now you feel like you know him. You know him very well. Yeah, I, more than knowing him in person, to know how much he makes and his net wealth, yep. and how long he's been with the company. You kind of went through so many positions to get to where he is. So uh, it's a lot about him. And then if I was to write everything, that would have been a lot of pages. 
So this gives you this this should this should tell us something, right? Um, that the more information we have publicly, then the more information that people might have access to, right, to get into our business. Yeah. So if you're a consultant or security consultant trying to help people navigate this whole idea of security, right? Well, yeah. um, people have to know what they are posting, things that might, I mean, things that you would never know, but it's right there. It's, pu it's publicly available, right? You never know. I don't, I don't think some of the stuff. So the question, the question that I have is, why is it important or necessary or helpful? I don't even know what the word is. To post all this kind of information. I mean, I can understand posting your name and your job, okay? Like professional stuff. I walk here, I walk here. But you're going to so much detail, you know, about, you know, things that involve your life, your family. Um, I just, it just kind of bothers me. Like some of you guys have presented yesterday, right? People go into so much detail about their lives. You know, I like this, I like guns, I like all that stuff. I mean, why, why, I mean, why is that? You know, I just don't get it. I guess that's, um, it's the lifestyle. It, right? It's just depending on your lifestyle, I think. I don't think okay. pretty much at that time he's thinking about what we are thinking right now. Uh, <laughs> a social life yeah. on Facebook, but he literally doesn't have much on Facebook aside the pages and the website, like things he donated. He barely has much about it's So there. you think that generally speaking, he has very little information, right? Little information. Compared to other people. But, you know, the things that he put out, he didn't know that it could make him more vulnerable than the things that he's restraining from the public. So he has pages, yep. he has political affiliations, he has things he likes, and other colleagues. And where he works, the, their website is all like on his, uh, some of the stuff he likes. But there's nothing like biography about him or aside his name, nothing else. Yeah. So... Pretty much, maybe he's trying to tell so what he believes in. This is my choice of life. This is what I think I be, I stand for. But uh, he yeah. might not be thinking about the negative side effect of what he put out. But another way, because he's a public figure and he's occupying a higher position, his information, some information about him is pretty much outside that he doesn't even know about his. Yeah, health. I understand. I understand that. I understand that. Yeah, his net wealth. I, I understand that. All those things. So. I think uh, if you are in such position, the best way is to look at where you think you can, you could be attacked, uh, or things that you think when you are taken away or being kind of hacked, uh, you wouldn't like it. I couldn't get his net uh, internet traces or whatever, so those things were. Good. Let me give you guys. Let me give you guys uh, a tip, because I'm sure that you know a lot of you guys are thinking about, you know where you're going to work, you know, what company you're going to work that's going to pay you 100,000, 120,000, 200,000, right? But think about this. Now, I don't know if there's a job description like that or even a job like that, but imagine yourself as a, some kind of a security professional and your job is to find information about people, just like what we have done, and to go back to market people and say, listen, this is information that I have found about you or potentially information we can find about you. Now, my job is to advise you, right, on how to not have, you know, on how to, you know, basically to clean up your profile so that whoever is looking for your information is not going to find anything except what you want them to find, right? So imagine yourself, that's your job and you have people working for you, and you're going about cleaning up people's profiles, right? Yeah. I mean, it, does, that sound like it, does that sound like a job that you're going to find customers for, Michael? Uh, yeah, you will, but it's going to be a difficult job. Oh, <laughs> how much would you charge? Let me, go to, let me ask Angel. 
how much would you charge for that kind of a, you know, that kind of a job? Like, look, I'm going to clean up your profile. This is what the public is seeing, and you don't want that. Angel, how much would you charge for stuff like that, and how long will it take? Is it even realistic as a, as a profession? Think something you can do for real? Clean up their online presence. Yeah, I mean, clean up their, yeah, their, yeah, I mean, that's where, I mean, look at everything that we have found, right? So is it possible like, to do stuff like that and make some money? Very complex, just because, you know, the information's already there. Um, they would have to delete their social medias and stuff like that. Like, LinkedIn, like, has so much information, like, you would have to get rid of it you know like it just be a lot of like the person himself has to be part of it too yeah so my question is is it a how do i say this is this a proposal that you think makes sense and are there people who you think will sign up for your kind of for this kind of proposal like sure if you're telling me that bad people can find all this information about me, well, go ahead and do it. What's it going to cost me? Is it, a, is it a job that somebody can do? Even if, it, of course, I mean, things are going, it's going to be hard. It's going to take you time. You're going to have to do all this stuff. But the person says, sign me up. So my question is, is it, a kind of, is it, a, is it an actual job that can be done? Um, it might be. I just never heard of a job like that, but... Maybe there is a job out there. There's a lot of jobs I haven't heard about, about before. So look at this one that uh, Michael is showing us now. This uh, Mr. Level, right? Or even uh, Angel, the one you found yesterday, right? Now just imagine in your wildest dreams that you, you, know, you, you sent your report anonymously, right, Angel, to that person, right? Can you imagine their reaction when they get it? Like, What? Where did you get all this information about me? And then you now write them and say, well, Wayne, you know, our company, we look for information about you that can compromise your life, and we bring you suggestions. We're not using your information for anything funny, but we're giving you suggestions about what you can do to protect yourself. Well, like you said, you haven't heard about it before, but hey, yeah, the innovations idea. are coming up. Go ahead. I've heard of uh, Ideal Seal. Uh, Ideal Seal is like uh, uh, they kind of have access to all your, like your bank information, your personal, your social security, uh, anything kind of personal that does not have to be in the public domain. Maybe used and is found somewhere else or whatever. Uh, if it's being used somewhere and you are not aware, you get a notification that. Uh, your your account is being uh, maybe somebody is trying to log your account in three or around maybe it will give you the exact location maybe the person the person might be using VPN to change the location but it's going to tell you around yeah. this and if it's not you uh, sometimes they tell you they are going to delete this is what they are going to do so it's probably working yeah. but they are not deleting all your account but they are kind of in notifying you that this is what is going on yeah. with information. Yeah. And if it's not yeah. you, then yeah. you can stop it. So that is happening. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if people can hire consultants for their property and consultants for, I mean, their health, health consultants, right? Health trainers. They have all these consultants and all these trainers, you know, for food, nutrition, and things like that. Well, why would you have a security consultant who makes sure that everything about your security in terms of your digital presence and stuff like that is all, all set, right? I mean, it's, that is, people make a lot of money, right? Yeah. I mean, look at the Colonial Pipeline. Right somewhere, the company pays $5 million. I mean, how many, I mean, how much, where are you going to get a job that's going to pay you $5 million, you know, just like that, <laughs> right? So if companies and individuals, like this example Michael just gave, you have a business 
and your business is about taking care of other people's security business, um, it's a lot of work for you. But I mean, imagine signing up a few people. That sounds to me like a very serious business that people um, may find, especially when they see the potential uh, danger from the information being exposed, or not even exposed, the information in the hands of wrong of the wrong people, right? So, just a suggestion: if you ever do it, just send me ninety percent of your of your first check, right? Anyway, well, uh, let's go. Let's go. To the next person here. Uh, so this is okay. This is okay. Uh, when we go to the part of using your reports to craft an actual attack. Okay, based on what I've found, here is an actual attack that can be carried out successfully. Then you're gonna use the information you've presented now to do that, all right? Okay. Okay, who else do we have? Uh, Mahad, what do you, did you share something else uh, with us? Mahad? Yeah, hi, Professor, let me share it. You shared yours already? No, 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 I'm sharing right now. All right, so what do you have? What company is this? Uh, the Hab the, the Heal? Yeah, this company um, is called the Hab Shield. Um, they do um, Dab Shield. Yeah, money transfer. Um, usually the people who came from- How, how did you find out about the company? Um, it is located in Roxbury. So I've seen like their name several times. So they deal um, with cash usually. And somehow it's okay, go, mm -hmm. go ahead. All right, so what did you find? So this company, um, I, ha I couldn't find um, some kind of um, risk information other than that, the address, their phone number and their fax. And also one of the uh, most weaknesses that they have is they have a lot of cash. They usually, um, people usually use this company to send money. So they accept only cash. And also one of the most weaknesses that they have is they have only one security guard. So- Wait, 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 wait. hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You said one of their weaknesses is they have one a lot of cash. Guard. Yeah, uh, yeah, they, no, you, they have okay. a cash and the weaknesses is that they have only one security How do you know that? How do you know that they have a lot of cash? Uh, because they deal only with cash. They don't accept any car at all. I, I understand. What I'm saying is, did you find any information that tells you, you know, that gives you that, inf or you just know because you see the company and you see people going in and out? Yeah, yeah, that basically, the, yeah, there's a... Just, just by observing the company, you sit down, yeah, you just stand outside the company and you see uh, people going Google. in and out? Yeah, and also that I got, like, they deal with the cash uh, through Google because they don't accept any car at all. They just accept only cash. So people use right. this company to send um, a cash to usually in, in Africa, is Africa specifically. So um, they deal with cash and only they have a security guard. Um, so I got this information through LinkedIn and also their website. So wait, 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 wait a second, wait a second. So they have only one security guard in the building? Yeah. Or what, what do you mean one security guard? Uh, one security person that has a, like one small gun in, in the front of the entrance. That's what I mean. So how did you know? How did you know that? How do you know that they have one security guard? Um, I walked by them. Wait, wait, you actually went to the building and you know looked around. Yeah, because uh, that's dangerous. Yeah. Why do you do that? Somehow, for some reason, I I did uh, misunderstand with the homework. So I thought that uh, you have to go and you know the. The company that I'm talking about, I have to know them. That's uh, the way that I understood uh, with this homework. But so now, that assignment told you on the assignment sheet, do not make any kind of a contact. And we try to emphasize that in class, but you decided to go to the building to no, look I around? Go inside, I just go by walking them right uh, to, the, to, the, to the history. Okay. So you saw one security guard outside. Yeah. How about inside? Do you know um, security guard inside? This this um this company is small. It's not that too big. So they have like a small building. 
and it has only one entrance. So I've seen only that um, security guard. That's the only person that I've seen there. How many times did you go past this building? Uh, probably one time. So only one time you went and then you saw one security guard. What time of day did you go? Uh, it was around 2 p.m., I think. 2, 3 p.m. In the afternoon. Okay, so do you know if they have more security in the morning or more at night? Because you only went one time. Now, f first of all, based on this assignment, that's a bad idea. Mm -hmm. that's, that was not instructions, right? So let's put that aside. So you went there. Well, for you to be absolutely sure of what they have or don't have, you need to do it multiple times. And at least... Right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. But um, so when you're trying to attack like Kemben or something like that, you have to know physically where they are, where they locate, and those kind of information. So it's, if I want to attack, maybe it will help me through that. Okay, let's keep going. What else did you find? And so what did you find that we, that we can? I mean, that's very. I mean, about the security guard, that's potentially useful information because. But that, is, but that is if you want to do a physical break-in. We're talking about social networking, right? Or social engineering, sorry, social engineering. Yeah. So did you find any other information that, you know, on, based on your online research? Um, about so this, no, that's the only thing that I got other than that um, they have these locations in, in, the, in the US and they only have in the US only. They, they, they have only one location back back home so the person that i got i got all of this information through um facebook linkedin and also google search so on um, on the other side i i've got uh this person his name is um ahmed Haib. he is uh, one of the uh, most successful uh people in around roxbury so um I got so how, wait, how did you how did you why did you choose this person because it came up, I just put like um, LinkedIn Proxybury. So it came up like that. It was like the first few people that came up. I don't know, somehow. Was All right. Maybe it came All up right. in connections or something like that. So his name is Amakai. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. And then um, he has a Facebook uh, and the name that he used um, with the Facebook is Ahmed Yarek. And also he has a Habe with LinkedIn. And also I got like his phone number uh, through uh, LinkedIn. So his hobbies- Wait, wait, you got his phone number on LinkedIn? Yeah, he put there. People put their phone numbers on LinkedIn? I never uh, heard of that actually. I think you can put there. Huh? Yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah, you can. You can put even your email if you want to contact. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I understand email, but phone numbers, I didn't know people put their phone numbers there. Yeah. So he one of the um, his hobbies that um, is soccer that I got that information from Facebook and also um, his relative his girlfriend's name is uh, Faduma Anissa. So he attacked with Facebook. There there was somewhere that you can put um, the relationship status. So it was like girlfriend and then he he attached with this uh, name and also Ayan yeah. is his sister that he also attached with Facebook. So uh, Mohammed Abi also went to uh, Bunker Hill and also he worked at, at the airport uh, with wild flight surfaces. So that's all that I, I've, uh, I could get for this person. There was no sensitive. Okay, well, wait a minute. You said uh, employee gestures and manners. How do you know he's, he's left-handed? Which one? Le employee gestures and manners. Left-handed. How do you know that he's left-handed? Uh, he, he, there was a video that he posted Facebook that he was playing soccer. He was like kind of um, uh, uh, dribble, what, what they call dribble. So he was using his left Dribbling? Hand. Yeah, left uh, leg, I think. How do you dribble using your left hand? I don't understand that. Uh, left left leg, I mean, no, no. Oh, no. left leg. Yeah, left leg. So I usually play soccer. Oh. So if the person uses for left leg, so he can use at the same time with the right, so. So that's where I got from that information. So there was no sensitive information about this person. That's, that was all that I could get. Well, this, this assignment is about getting information that can be used in a potential attack. So based on what you found, 
What kind of an attack can you can you create out of um, this? I can what you found here. The one thing uh, through his phone number that I can send him um, information about that, like uh, a message that says like uh, you have changed your advisor. Then I can add like a link that when he click for that link, I can get the information that I want from him. So uh, in nowadays, um, wait, 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 wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. You have his phone number. Yeah. So you send him a what? A message that's example like that says um, you have changed your advisor. So he will get to the attention to the message. And then when he gets so to you the send message, him a message. Yeah, that says you like send him a message that. saying that he has changed his password. You, you have been changing your password. So if you didn't do password, like, password for what? Password for what? Uh, like Amazon or Facebook, something like that. But not the the main point is that to kill it with the link. Yeah, you see, you haven't given him any reason to click on your link. You I, said, I, I mean, like if I get a text, hang on, hang on. I get a text on my phone that says, click on this link to change your password. No, most no, people, that's not the most password. people, most people are not going to click on the link. I guess, right? So the point of this assignment was for you to get information that you can use for an attack, possibly, right? Things that you know about the person and you use that stuff that you know about the person to do something, you know, potentially, it's just a field exercise. So saying that you're going to send somebody a text about changing their password and they're going to click on the link, come on, that doesn't make sense to me. I think, Professor, a lot of people will fall um, into this case because if you get a message that says you have been successfully changed your buzzer uh, with Amazon, you will get to your it will get your attention. Then it, at the end of the message, it, it will say like, um, if you didn't do this step, click this link to get back to like. Yeah, but you see, that is not listen. That is not sufficient. That is not sufficient. You have to use. If a bit more information about the person, information about the person or their relatives, right? You have to, we've been talking about, we've been talking about social engineering, right? Yeah. There's more you can do. You, there's more that you can do. This is very limited. There's got to be more you can do to extract information. If it doesn't work for one person, go look for somebody else. Why are you going to get stuck with one person and say, well, I couldn't find anything. Your job is to research. So say you're going to send a, send a text message, that is too limited. You need something more personal How about that gives you, you know, a higher, hang on, hang on, that gives you a higher likelihood of success, right? That gives you a higher likelihood of success. If you, if you said to the class, well, maybe you can use this, Fatuma, Anissa, or Ayan, right, and go through that angle using their names to do something, maybe that's more likely because he knows his girlfriend's name, he knows his, if the girlfriend has a friend, right? So you've got to be creative in what you're thinking about and not just assume that you send somebody a text, you know, and the text come from some unknown person or a known company that claims to be Amazon. Amazon never sends you text messages. Anyway, let's move on to the other person. So that's, that's the point here. If your, your research is too limited, you need to get somebody else and get more information. I mean, you've seen what your classmates have, have tried to do, right? Yeah. Saying, oh, I couldn't get anything, that's too limited. They're, millions of people around and this involves research it's an assignment it's an assignment it's not do it if you can or if you can't it's a graded assignment and it requires you to put in a lot of effort right to get the results you're looking for so it's not an optional thing well i couldn't get anything whatever you had a whole week to do it and so you got to put in enough effort and time because when this work is graded, it's going to reflect how much I feel you put into it or not. If you didn't do a good job, then your grade is going to reflect the same thing. 
So field exercises, it's, it's got to be taken seriously. You can't just spend one hour and say, I'm done. Your information, you have to do a, a complete job, right? Yep. All right, let's move on. Who else do we have? Uh, let's see. Cindy, have you, sent, have you shared your report yet? No. All right, let's have it. Um, so this is a company I did. I did Brucker Corporation. They're in. Who are these guys? How do you find out about them? Oh, on LinkedIn, they always have a lot of job openings, so I decided to do them. Um, they right. manufacture and develop scientific instruments. Um, they're really hard to like find information on. Like their website is just like about what what they've developed and stuff. So I had to like go to a lot of websites, but I did find a lot of their facilities around the world. They have a lot, a lot of them. And I found some of their partners, but they're kind of old. So I don't know if they're still with them. Um, the most information I found was like from a person, it was this lady. So hang on. So just like I said to uh, Mahat right now, when you complete this, Cindy, and you yeah. feel like, oh, well, this is not good enough, why didn't you go look for another company to, that could give you a chance of getting more information? Because you tried one, you're saying, I mean, you're telling us right now, I didn't really get anything. Well, why did you just end it there? Is you know, there are find? lots of companies on, on LinkedIn, right? I'm sure. So what well, happened there? You just did one and just quit. Well, I thought they were really interesting. Like, I mostly found a lot of information from their shareholders because they have an annual paper that they give out to their shareholders and it's online. And that's what I found. Right. Like, their typical security threats. It's, um, they, have, they have a lot of social engineering scams, hacking, phishing attempts, malware. Um, they're always worried about their networks being breached. And they have a lot of, they have some openings for security jobs. And since there's such a big corporation, I know that they would have a lot of threats. Well, Cindy, I'm sure a lot of companies a lot of threats don't you think yeah so this is not unique to this particular company the point is what can we use against this company if we were attackers ourselves if i was paying you to do this job cindy and say go get me information about these guys that i can use are you going to expect to be paid at the end of the week cindy that's no. the point you see that's the point all right, so I'm not going to keep talking about this because we've talked about this. So how about the individual? What did you find about the individual? So I picked this lady. Her name is Brianna Wrangler. On her Facebook, she shares a lot of information. Wait, about who's herself. she and how did you, who's Brianna? How did you find out about Brianna? On LinkedIn, like she was just a random person that popped up. Okay. I, I went on her Facebook and she shares a lot of stuff on there. She shared her birth date. Like with the year a and everything. Birth date. Yeah. Okay. And, and then she shared where she currently works. She shared um pictures of her getting the vaccine and then her vaccine card. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And, why uh, why did she do that? Did she say a reason why she had to do that? Oh no, she was just celebrating that she got the vaccine. Celebrating. Yeah. Did you celebrate when you got your vaccine? Yes. Cindy? But I didn't post it. Okay. Well, we all celebrated, but yeah, we didn't post it and tell the whole world. Hey, look at it. Look at my shot here, right? Okay. Um, she takes a lot of pictures of when she travels. So that's another... So where has she been? Where has she traveled to? Where she, what she what kind of places has she been to? She went to Belgium... And then she posted recently that she wants to go back. 
Um, wow. She likes to help children. I saw a lot of posts about helping them with mental health. She has a lot, a lot of friends on Facebook. I found her girlfriend. Her girlfriend is Danica Cucci. Um, she currently works at Walden Behavioral Care as a registered nurse. So you said here, you said it seems easy to contact this person on Facebook. What does that mean? Like yeah, she responds it, to everybody or what? Her Facebook profile is very open. So you oh. can definitely contact her through there. Okay. Um, she posted a lot about what she likes. She likes Dance Moms, the show. She likes to go to TD Garden. She's been there twice before the pandemic. Um, I found her Instagram, but it's private. So I couldn't get anything out of that one. And then I Googled her name and she got the Dean's List at Salem State University when she graduated. And okay. And there's a link to that graduation picture? You have a source? Well, it's, it's like the list of the names PDF. and her name is there. Okay. Um, she we has four sixty nine children. What's that? Uh, scroll no, up a little bit. No, friends and family. Oh, <laughs> friends and family. Yeah. Four sixty nine. What is yeah. four sixty nine? I mean, that's like the... the folks following her and liking and stuff like that. No, those are the people who are her friends. But I saw some family members there, but I don't know their relationship because she didn't post about them. Um, she okay. She likes to visit Salem a lot on her Facebook. It always says the, the check-in thing where it's like, oh, we're checking in from this place. That's where she's usually at. So um, does she live in Salem? No, she lives in Waltham. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, she likes to help children with eating disorders. That's her biggest thing now. And she's excited about her new job because that's what she's doing now. As a nurse, as an RN. Yes. Um, so on a scale of on a scale of you know one to ten, ten being I know this person so well, and zero being I don't know I don't know anything about this person. What where do you think you are at with this person? An eight. An eight, right? Now how do um imagine if someone who didn't know you, Cindy, right? Just like you don't know this person, and she doesn't know you. Somebody who didn't know you felt like they knew 80% about you. How would that make you feel? It's creepy. Creepy, right? Yes. So what could you do with this information? Give me an example. If you well, want to do something real bad. With her, since she put her birthday, I could probably steal her identity. And how would you do that? I know there are like websites where if you like put the information in, you could buy certain things like her social security like buy a profile or something yeah or you can buy her social security uh, off online and how much would that cost for you to do all that stuff i mean it would probably cost a pretty penny what's maybe a pretty a, penny maybe like a grand or more you mean one thousand dollars to get somebody's identity Wow. Well, it would be a social security card, and that's that's pretty important. Okay. So you could steal her identity. What else could you do to get more personal I if could, you want to do some more damage? I could also probably call her a job and ask about her. If you act like one of her family members, it gets pretty easy because they don't really question it. Yeah, that's right. You just call on the phone and say, you know, I'm, you know, this person or... Or you can fake to be somebody who knows this, Danica Gucci. Is it Gucci or Gucci? Whatever it is. Yeah, you can right. probably say you're her girlfriend. Or say that you're the girlfriend's somebody and, you know, there's been some trouble, blah, 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 right? Yes. And they got to meet at this, at this place and stuff like that. It takes a lot of work, but it can be done. See, that's how people who are trying to do harm to other people, that's how they think. Right now, you don't think that way, but that's how people think, right? They get to know 
as much of, of this person as possible, almost 100%, so they can use that information to do some real bad stuff. So like I was asking Angel, imagine if it was your job to advise people, like you get people to pay you and advise them. You don't want to do stuff like this. This, is, this has potential to go bad for you if you do stuff like this. Most people on social media are cool. They just want to read stuff, have a good time, and just go away. But one person, just one person who decides to be mean, right? Just one person. I mean, let's just say, Cindy, you woke up tomorrow morning, and you just felt like, I'm done with the world. I need to hurt somebody, <laughs> right? Well, you have a lot of stuff you can hurt this girl with, right? Yes. Um, so that could be a job. I mean, you could get people to pay 10000 bucks to secure their identity. I don't know if they're going to pay you that much. They can pay you more. How, how important is it for me to safeguard my security? What's the value of that? If I lose that, right? Like if you are able to impersonate this girl, that's, that's gonna, that might just ruin her life entirely. Or your credit goes bad. The bank start calling you. You can't get a, a loan, you can't get an apartment, everything starts falling apart. So what's, that, what's the value of that to this person, right? So that's the point of this um, whole exercise here. All right, well, I think we're done. I think you guys all talked. Did somebody not say anything? I didn't say anything. Yu Yang? Couldn't say anything. If not? Uh, I think I haven't. If not, you haven't shared yours? No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I thought everyone had done... Okay, go ahead. You have a few more minutes before we end the class. Yeah, you won't be long. Maybe I was mixing you up with... Um, I don't know, I just thought you had. Okay. Okay, so I did the Amazon. Uh, this is who? Uh, I thought it was Yves Not. Who's talking right now? Me. Uh, you young. Wait, wait a minute. Ibn, didn't you say you hadn't presented? Yeah, I'm trying to remote, but he already uh, shared his screen. So, oh. So. oh, so both of oh. you haven't to... Okay, I'm going to give yeah, you guys... I, I, I didn't know that it was too... Okay, go ahead, Yu Yu. I, I think Yu Yu like, did his We're yesterday. Gonna give you... Yeah, so I did the Amazon. And, uh... you did this wait, wait, didn't we Fish? see Amazon yesterday? Yes, he yeah, did yeah, it yesterday. Yeah. I, I, I worked with... Uh, Function and uh, we yeah we come up with the Amazon. okay well okay if you guys work together then we don't have to go by because you guys work together so we saw no, that yesterday I, right is this some, is that something different I didn't uh, work yeah with I, I mean the company is about same only the employee is uh, different like I picked a different employee to uh, so what employee did you pick uh, my employee is named uh, Karen Pride and uh, his uh, Pride uh camera Pride. And so how did you find that about how did you find out about this Kareem? Kareem? Yeah, I think it's how to pronounce it. Yeah, I got how did you uh, find out about this person from the uh, uh like there's a on Facebook there's a like an Amazon community where they post the uh they have a post the employees. About, yeah, about the their like the they share their experience, uh, work at Amazon, and I just random picked him because uh he replied one of the posts. So. All right. So what did you find about this person? Uh, he actually have a lot of pictures and, uh, yeah, uh, on Facebook. And uh, so uh, so most of the information I got about him is from Facebook. And uh, yeah, and uh, I think like from the uh, picture he posted on Facebook, I think it's a package transportation, his work is basically. And uh, for contact uh, method, I think the Facebook is the best because he's used the Facebook very frequently at the uh, tell me about tell me about his relatives and friends. Uh, who's who's Lisa Green? 
I think actually he didn't mention about Lisa Green, but Lisa Green replies a lot of his posts. So I oh so I assume they must be knowing well about each other. No why you otherwise why you don't reply? Like uh okay who is post often yeah. And, uh, what of Deborah Thomas? That's his mother. Yes, and uh, this how do you know? Uh, is on the build, uh, on the profile Facebook, Facebook profile. Okay. Yeah. And uh, he worked uh, at a former cashier at McDonald's in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. So where does this person work now? In Boston? No, it's at uh, Amazon. Uh, it's uh, at, yeah. He's still at. Uh, Philadelphia, because you know, like Amazon have a lot of the transportation sta uh, stations, and uh, he work like overall he works for Amazon, but just in a different place. So in in Philadelphia, he used to work at McDonald's. Yeah, and uh, he joined. Uh, he would start working at Amazon at uh, uh, twenty twenty. Yeah. And, uh, okay, from, so um, so what? Can, so give me an give me an example of an attack from your information that you have here. Um, I probably what what an attack you can carry out with this information. You mean from online or or any other? From any other. based on the information that you found. Give create an create an example or tell us an example of an attack, right? That you can create from this information. You, just like I've talked to all your classmates, right? What can you do with the information you found against this person negatively? Uh, I can contact him from Facebook and pretend I'm a uh like I want to be friend with him or I can. Pretend I have a uh, same habit or ha uh, same hobbies with him, and uh, we can just. What do you mean? Stuff. So, for example, I mean, like, yeah, go ahead. So, like uh, his, uh, where is, where is his yeah, like he likes shop, shopping, sports, and outdoor trips. So, I can pretend I also like uh, this, uh, this kind of act activities and. Uh, just try to be friend with him at first place, and then I can. So if I do, you have a do you have a Facebook account? Oh uh, yes, I do. So I if do. I send you a message on your Facebook account and say, "Oh, you like you like to play soccer? I like to play soccer." Okay, are you going to reply? Are you going to reply to me to everybody who tell who tells you stuff like that? That is not enough. Is that enough uh, to just post on somebody's social media? Is that enough? Is that enough information that helps you to get into somebody's life? Social, social engineering means that you use what you know about the person, right? What you know about the person. Posting on your social media, that doesn't do much. What are you going to post there? You need something personal that you can use to get into their life. Okay? You need something personal that you can use to get into their life. Not just post this stuff on the, I don't think that's enough to get somebody's attention. Or else I can just try uh, to send some kind of commercial to him. Like about like either, like as we know, he cares, like he cares uh, his family very much. I can probably send some of uh, uh, commercial about the, whatever it's a uh, uh, like good for his family for example if his mom is a uh, age is too old i can send uh i can say like there's a uh, some other equipment that good for her uh, health or kind of stuff right, so the like first, food did you say food no equipment. I mean, a, a oh equipment. equipment. So, okay. So his mother is um is sick or is ill. I mean, he he's uh she's old. 
She's probably how do you know she's old? Sixty or how do you know she's old? From oh, the, the age is there. Yeah, there's a picture on Facebook about that. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, so I all right, do... well, we got to wrap this up now. Um, let's do the attendance, and we can be out of here. Maybe um, you can finish up next week, and um, if not, you guys can wrap up what what you have, okay. um, and just share with us what you have. But the next the next time you we continue this exercise, you're going to have to use what you have found to craft an actual attack. Well, not an actual attack, right? It's all class work, but you're going to craft a potential attack that can be used uh, for a successful um, you know, attack. And it's about using enough personal information to get their attention. You don't just say, I'm just going to send you an email or send you a, a link to your phone or post on your social media. Something convincing that you found that you can use. Okay, so the next time we get to this, uh, we look at this field exercise, we're gonna, we might decide to move it forward to that level. All right, uh, do you see the attendance? What options do you see there? Line. Line square, hands round. Okay, and uh, what's it? Line. Line? Hands. Yeah. Line is correct. That was good. Line is correct. All right, so your assignments are have been published. You have assignments in Cengage, and you have an assignment in Blackboard. The Blackboard assignment is the quiz, the regular quiz assignment four. Um, and you have your, let me just end this right here.